again, don't care if you're using GitLab or anything, as long as you're using something. Um, but if you're not using Circle CI, you'll, you will lose orbs, which is most of what I'll be talking about today. That's the package managed fun times. So when? You can trigger a job on any commit, or you can do it on a schedule. So I have a repo, personally, that's just running out there every 10 minutes. It pings my servers, makes sure that it gets back what it expects. Downside is it doesn't support IPv6, but that's not the worst thing in the world. I'm using a free monitoring service, basically. So that's just the schedule. On the commit, you can do anything you want. You're limited completely by your imagination. You can define the shell as Python and just push arbitrary Python via the API. I still haven't found a great use case of that, but I just love it. So what is CI? CI is continuous integration. CD is, conti <laughs> excuse me. CD is continuous deployment. A lot of people don't necessarily know that. Now you know. Um, and what do you mean by package managed? I mean orbs. And by orbs, I didn't pick the name. What the heck is an orb? Um, it's a simple way of configuring some tests, some commands, and having it referenced easily in your config. So previously in Circle CI, we had YAML anchors. And YAML anchors were great in that it allowed you to take one thing and replicate it multiple times in the config. You change one line, and it changes all of those. The downside is how big configs were getting and how awful it was to manage these anchors, especially when you want to change one thing. So now you have multiple anchors. So orbs accept parameters, and they'll allow you to do a lot of versatile things. Um, it's basically just configuration snippets. It's not unlike using a node module in package.json, just kind of pulling that in and referencing it. So, again, it's 2019. You should be using CI, CD in some, some fashion. I don't care if you're using Circle CI or not. But, um, but the benefit of orbs is that someone may have written what you've already adventured out to do. Um, there are a lot of common orbs out there that I'll get into in a few slides, but someone probably wrote what you want right now. Um, one great example is double deployments. You don't want things to double deploy. So someone's come up with a solution to that, I promise. Um, and package management is good. I think we can all agree that package management is a good thing. So how? Very carefully, that's how we're going to do things. Um, with a tag in orbs, only an admin can actually publish this tag. And when you publish the tag, it's completely immutable. So you have these dev tags. You can continuously push these dev tags, just get to where you want to be. And when you have something that you feel is production ready, you can publish it as an admin, and that version will never change. So you can reference that version in your config, and it will never change, and you get that peace of mind. And so that's, that's a fantastic first step right there. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you can pass parameters for versatility. So you can use the node orb to install node, and you just tell it what version you want. Same for PHP, Ruby, whatever floats your boat. So orbs, they're extremely simple to use, and there already have been many published to the registry. Um, we have a lot of official ones that CircleCI has authored, and there are others that CircleCI partners have authored, and then there are ones from the community that people have just created and published. And uh, I think only the ones that we've written ourselves are certified, but we have a huge registry of orbs, and I recommend looking through it. Uh, that's the link to the registry. I know you can't exactly click it off the screen, but I do have a link to the slides at the end of the slides, so if you bear with me, you'll get there. Um, but yeah, so if you need the AWS CLI, bam, right there. I actually wrote that one. Uh, Slack notifications, good friend of mine wrote that one. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, linting, I have no idea who that person is, but he's a great member of the community. I would love to meet him one day. Um, but yeah, lots of great things. So if you want to do linting, bam, done for you. So that one's probably Ruby specific or something, Python. Dumpster fires. So real life scenarios. Mono repo support right now at CircleCI is a little bit iffy. We kind of expect you to commit something and to run your tests on that. But if you have a dozen directories and you only want to run what's changed, you have a problem. It's a little bit more complicated. So uh, my coworker, I don't know how to say her username, 
I'm not going to lie, um, came up with this compare URL orb. And this basically hits the API a lot and figures out what the last thing that you ran was. And then it finds that and uses that to get the diff. And it uses that diff to run only the things that have changed. So we're using that in our convenience images where we're building, I don't even know how many languages and variants of those languages. So if we change PHP, we only want to build PHP, especially because it takes hours to build the PHP images. So if we changed Python, we don't want PHP to start doing things again, basically. Um, this version is completely immutable, will never change, and will only ever touch the things that are in the diff. So it's pretty fantastic. And this, where'd my mouse go? This link here is the actual live implementation of this URL, of this orb, excuse me. Um, so we're actually using that in production to build our CircleCI convenience images. So some common packages that people install, or Docker, make, or you know, build essential, that kind of stuff. Um, PIP, all the AWS tools like CLI, ECR, S3, ECS, uh, Heroku, Node, and then along with Node you have Python, Ruby, PHP, uh, and then Kubernetes, Helm, that kind of stuff. All those things have s real simple orbs. So you just need to take the existing orb, just tell it what version you want, and just ins run it and install it. You just reference that you're using that at the top, and just use it. Super simple stuff. So it doesn't get count as package management. I mean, depends on how you do it, but it's not immutable. That's like the real big problem that we've run into is that people have configs and they are not immutable. Things change upstream, whether it's Debian pushing a new Java version that has default things changed, which is a horror story I can tell you folks later. But um, things are not immutable in CI, and that's good and bad, because you do want to have familiarity with what the most recent thing out there is. You want to be testing against that latest thing, make sure that everything's working. But you don't really want your config changing out from under you. So that was pretty much the big thing. A big big ask we had was, hey, can we have only admins change the config? And so we're not fully there yet, but right now if you were to publish a config that's pretty much only orbs, only admins can actually publish those orbs. So that gives you that, that ability to uh, kind of lock things down a little bit. Um, we, we believe in infrastructure as code very firmly, and so it gets a little meta here. Bear with me, but each orb gets its own Git repository. In each Git repository, you're going to have tests. So you're basically testing, you're testing, you're testing. But uh, that's definitely the way to go. Gives you Boston peace of mind right there. So to elaborate on that, test each orb as if it were its own application. If it's test, if you're pushing a new version and it passes its tests, then you're good. You know, but if you pushed a new version and it failed the tests, definitely don't publish that. Something's wrong. So now you have several layers of testing going on, and you can unfortunately pull orbs into your orb. So be careful with that. You can get a little deep with testing, you're testing, you're testing. Um, but another thing meant with uh, running things against the most recent versions, you can run things on a cron job. So you can just run things whenever you want, make sure things run as expected. You'll always get that email notification if it fails. Um, basically making things robust is the idea here. So convenience images, I was talking about them earlier. We were using the, the compare URL orb to, uh, to get the diff. They're open source. They're fantastically convenient, just like the name suggests. We have a lot of great stuff installed in them. Um, I think we just merged in make, which made the image a lot bigger. But it is what it is. Um, but getting bigger images means it's going to slow down your job a bit. So instead of doing that, where we're continuing to add more to these images, the team responsible for the images has decided to take a sharp left turn. We're going to make them nice and small, and we're going to use orbs to install things at runtime instead. So we're going to try and slim down the images, have them all off of a single base image. 
And so that way, when you pull in your image, you'll have uh, the cached layers, and everything should be basically the same speed or faster using that methodology. Um, but if you're concerned about your build time, which you should be, don't use convenience images. I know, it's kind of a crazy thought. I was just talking it up, but it's probably not the best idea for you. If you want to get your project just up off the ground and you just want to get your tests run, convenience images are great. But if you have a huge app or you know something close to your heart, for example, um, maybe maybe don't use convenience images. You want to match production because right now you're at the mercy of what we give you. Um, that's not always the worst thing. It works for a lot of people, but for a lot of people, it doesn't work that great. Um, we use Debian a lot. We're just extending upstream, so we use Debian. And if you need Ubuntu fonts, for example, which I ran into, someone's generating PDFs and comparing every pixel to make sure it's perfect, the PDF generation. The fonts between Debian and Ubuntu are different enough that you couldn't visually tell, but all the tests failed. Uh, so in that case, we had to build an image from scratch and try and keep it slim. Um, it worked out really well long term for that customer. So I'm really glad they went that option. But basically, the new images we have will be immutable. The current ones are not. Either way, you're not matching production. And I think it's really important to match production. I could only come up with a match icon there. Sorry. But... Um, Matching production is key, though, because if you're running different environments in CI and production, then what are you actually testing? It can be kind of tricky to think about, but because you can be like, oh, my tests run fine. They, they pass locally, they pass in CI, they pass in, in production. But if something changes, changes in production, and you didn't catch it in the other steps, now you have a big problem because production is down. Um, so you want to match your libraries, all of your dependencies, all of that stuff can just match easily in your Docker containers. I mean, that's half the point of Docker. Make it easy to just to ship these things out and have everything be consistent between everybody. So when you update production, you have the liberty of updating CI first to verify it works. There's no reason to test compatibility in production. And then my last closing thought, pretty much, is not to let your config grow out of control. It's really common to start with a small config, and you keep putting logic in there, and suddenly you're at a 1,000 lines. Probably not using orbs if you were to hit that actual number, but instead of doing that, just create some files within your repository, whether it's in the .circle.ci directory or in a bin directory, just have some executables in there with most of your logic in there to extract that out of your configuration. So if you can't make it an orb, maybe it can't be public, for example, just make it a script. It makes everything a lot faster to process on our end to make it faster for you. Um, and that's pretty much what I got. I want to open this up to discussion. So does anyone have any questions? Yes. Yes. We have our UI available with all of the, the your whole build history. And so like what I personally do for my builds, um, even though it's probably a little bit overkill, um, I take everything that I do and put the output into files, and then I store those files as artifacts, and you can even pull those down from the API. So you could even bypass our UI entirely. Fun fact, there's actually a bug in our UI where if you're not logged in, the artifacts tab does not show up, but if you manipulate the URL, it does show up. It's just a fun fact for you there. Sorry?
not within the artifacts. That's within the orbs themselves. Um, I think the dev tags expire. Don't hold me to that. But uh, the production ones are at least immutable once you once you do publish them. And that's pretty good stuff to be able to have the admins have control of that. Another feature I didn't really put into the slides were the ability to hold jobs. Um, so if you were to have a job hold and wait, an admin can run that job, and it will run that job with that admin's permissions. So that's another way to get around some security-specific things. Because um, we have now secured contexts, which allow you to store secrets and have only people that are authorized have access to them. And so if that person that's authorized runs that job, they would have access to the secrets. And so that's really convenient for some open source projects. The downside is it adds some manual overhead to the team that's working on it, unfortunately. You do need to explicitly define the context in the config for you to reference it. Um, but it is pretty much just available at that point, if, as long as you have access. Any other questions? Fair enough. I did open source this. This is the link to my presentation. You can come and check it out, copy paste things. Probably. In theory, I can make this bigger. Oh, yeah, we're going to zoom. I'm not a fan of Google ending their shortening service. Probably. I have an Android device. They, I am their data, yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just Siri does. That's OK. Well, one thing I will say um, about double deployments, because I briefly mentioned that earlier. <sighs> when you're writing your config, always try to, to think of a scenario where someone's going to be pushing at exactly the same moment as you, even if that was just you going, oh, no, that was a typo, and you just pushed again. You don't want that to double deploy. That is like worst case scenario. You have like half of one commit and half of another commit in production. That's skeeves me out really bad. Please never do that. Um, one cool workaround you can do is to have an endpoint. And since you can store secrets in the, in the UI in uh, various ways, you can hit an endpoint with a secret to tell it that, like, hey, I am who I promise I am. And it will just git pull. Because if you just git pull, pretty sure things are going to be OK. Don't force push. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got. Thank you all for coming.